I like struggle with so much still that you can't see or tell unless I complain about it or talk about it or wear sunglasses inside. And I'm that kid that's wearing sunglasses inside and shouldn't be. feeling the bump of my head it was still there and they were looking in my eyes and my eyes were like really big like really dilated and I was like I don't know like you people are crazy whatever like she would ask me when my birthday was and it would take me a while to answer I knew when my birthday was I knew what she asked me I just wasn't able to connect the two necessarily I couldn't even do this at Pride Walk she just wanted me to walk and I like wasn't at that functioning spot She's the one who classified it as a traumatic brain injury. And then she was like, you need to see a neurologist. So you're like, well, that's super scary. I think I had a constant headache for four months. Like I had a number eight headache out of 10 for four months. My brother opening a bag of chips I couldn't take. I would like, I would scream. I feel like every day I'm still in a fog that I need to try to swim through. Yes, my head hurts. On a scale of one to 10 is probably a four. I have piercing headaches, I have sharp headaches, I have pounding headaches, I have throbbing headaches. It's not a constant headache anymore. There are times that I don't have headaches, but I have a headache majority of the time. Every day, every day I have at least three headaches. Throbbing headache. It's like a pulse in my head and it's just there and there and there and there. It's like somebody's playing a piano and it's just that same note over and over and over again. And then if you jump to another spot and it's another note, and it's just there and it's there and it's there and then you go back. And it's just there and it's there and it's there and it's there. My piercing headaches start with like ringing in my ears. Like something small like a needle or a pin extended and just going right through my head, shooting right through it. It's difficult to read. When I read, I have trouble following the lines. I have to use my finger a lot when I read, and little kids have to do that, and sometimes, like, it's common for people to do that. But if I don't use my finger to follow reading, I'll lose my place. And it's not even like I'll go down to the line below, it'll be like two or three lines below. I walk to the brightness and have to close my eyes because I can't look at it. And I will get an immediate headache from it. Everything's just white. It's like you walk outside and you see the light, but it's just to the extreme where it's just white. I feel like with a lot of my things though, with my symptoms, it's more frustrating for other people than for me. Most because I've learned how to deal with this fog and how to get through it. But for other people, it's like, come on, wake up, Abby. But I'm at that point now where I don't have hope in my treatment because there's no use for it. I've been let down so many times with my doctors saying they can fix me and they can't. So there's no point in expecting anything or wanting something to happen. It seems like with all of my treatments, I am that 1% that hasn't been getting better. I know what it's like to not have a life. School, I hated school before. My junior year, my first year back to school after the injury, I don't think I said that I hated school once or said that I didn't want to go to school. I want to go to school. Because I know what it's like to not go to school and not be able to go to your everyday activities. If you're gonna be miserable, you might as well be happy. <laughs>